As per the title, pterodactyls aren't real. Yep, don't exist, never did. But the reason for this might be a bit more complex than you'd think. Today we're talking about pterodactylus, and how it, along with many other pterosaurs, were lumped into the name pterodactyl, both within the public eye and early paleontologists. Our story begins all the way back in 1784, before even the first dinosaur was even discovered, 40 years later. This was when Pterodactylus was officially described, though we know that a Pterodactylus was acquired by a museum collection in Hungary before 1784, a focus on the one we have more detail on for simplicity's sake. It was retrieved from the Solnolfen limestone, which is a deposit of sediment that contains some seriously well-preserved fossils, including animals like Archaeopteryx. It was brought to Cosimo Alessandro Collini's Cabinet of Curiosities, which is one of the earliest examples of a natural history museum. Despite what we know of pterosaurs today, Cosimo first thought that it was actually a sea creature, kind of like a penguin, which isn't too horrible considering nothing like it has been found before. Plus, we know the ocean had some pretty freaky stuff down there. It wasn't until Johann Hermann came along, a French naturalist in the early 1800s, that Pterodactylus was realized to have been a flying creature, though he thought it was more like a mammal than a reptile. The actual name started as pterodactyl, with a hyphen in the middle. This was given by Georges Cuvier, who worked with Hermann in studying the fossil. Though this wasn't a true translation, as most animal names come from the Latin language, the suffix us is used for masculine nouns. Leading scientist Constantine Samuel Raffinisk to change the name to pterodactylus in 1815. After this, the name pterodactylus started to take hold with pterodactyl being used as a generic name for pretty much any flying reptilian fossil. And all while it became a household name, scientists insisted on shoving nearly every other pterosaur into the name of pterodactylus for decades. Ramphorhynchus, an animal wildly different with its short head and long tail, was dubbed pterodactylus. There was Simoleopterus, a crested pterosaur that was once called pterodactylus, even the original fossils for what we now know as Pteranodon, which was over five times the size of Pterodactylus and had the famous horn-like crest, was given the same name. I'm not exaggerating when I say that nearly every flying thing that was uncovered in the early to mid-1800s was assigned to Pterodactylus. And once scientists tried to get those animals into different names, it only made things more confusing for colleagues and the general public, since the name Pterodactyl had already taken hold. Hopefully now you get why calling so many different animals pterodactyl is so frustrating. It's not just an excuse for us to nerd out all over your face, but it also is just confusing and doesn't really help the issue as to what pterodactyl actually means. Scientific terminology helps to clear that confusion up now that we have centuries of research to go off of. Now with that spiel out of the way, we can now talk about just what kind of animal pterodactylus was. Despite the 30 plus specimens we have from this little guy, it seems only one is confirmed to be an adult, and it's only from a single skull. Still, it's pretty small with its estimated ring span being 1 meter, or 3.3 feet long, and weighing in at around 3 pounds. This doesn't sound large, and it isn't compared to other pterosaurs, but it's still around the size of a red-shouldered hawk. The skull of this adult specimen was around 6 inches, but housed nearly 90 conical teeth. Its snout was also super straight, unlike several other pterosaurs. What it did share with them though are large holes in the skull, making the animal as light as possible so it could be capable of flight. Even more interesting is the back of the head, which has just enough information for us to know that some kind of anchoring structure was there along with a ridge down the center, allowing a crest of unknown shape atop of its head. Whether the crest was entirely soft tissue or is made of bone that just got broken off during extraction is unknown. We don't have any evidence of it in the several younger specimens, so it probably grew as the animal reached maturity. Not only do we have different ages of pterodactylus, but we also have different year classes. This is the population of young born during a single year. The specimens have been categorized into three year classes, which give us insights into breeding seasons. We know they bred seasonally and grew consistently throughout their lives, a pattern more similar to crocodilians than modern birds. What's even more surprising is its diet. Small pterosaurs are often depicted in pop culture as living inland and eating vertebrates, but a 2020 study on pterosaur toothwear suggests it mostly stuck to invertebrates such as insects and maybe even mollusks. It likely wasn't until they reached full maturity that they could handle larger food. 
which would still be limited to small fish and other critters. Its teeth would have helped with this, being chromed in a way that acts like a cage for captured prey. The Sonolfin limestone contains a ton of organisms, meaning Pterodactylus was anything but lonely, with Ramphorhynchus and Scaphignathus being two of the many different pterosaur species it coexisted with. As mentioned before, there was also Archaeopteryx, along with Compsognathus, a small theropod dinosaur. There was also Dacosaurus, a crocodile-like marine reptile, and Igerosaurus, an ichthyosaur like the one in the last video, but way smaller. Pterodactylus itself doesn't get mentioned by name too often in media, being replaced with Pteranodon or some generic pterosaur design labeled as pterodactyl. It does, however, show up in a few games, specifically in the Jurassic Park franchise. Jurassic Park Builder, Jurassic World The Game, and Jurassic World Alive have pterodactylus, though not the most accurate in terms of design, unsurprisingly. Let me know your thoughts on pterodactylus in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff, and join the Discord to hang out with nerds like you. Also, head over to twitch.tv slash paleentertainment to hang with the community live. Love y'all, and as always, keep your pencils sharp.